and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you all. For good and wonderful, for true purpose, and everything grand, and all is well in your world. Hello there, everybody. Uh, today's video, everybody, it is yet another pedal board update. I've had a few people requesting pedal board updates since it's, it, it looks a bit different to kind of what I've, I've kind of used a bit. So I thought I would get around to that today. Um, this might change yet again very soon, maybe. But it's a, it's a big maybe. I don't know at this point in time. We will see people with tube. Um, it depends if I can afford to buy the new Fender, what's it called? Power station thing that gives me will give me the ability to run 12 pedals instead of just 8. Uh, not that I actually want 12 pedals, but there are two other pedals I would really like to be able to use. But we'll more about that later on. Anyway, um, so yeah, so... What I thought I'd do today for YouTube is it's, it's something slightly different because I'm going to tell you my settings that I've got on my pedals as well um, and show you kind of like what I've got programmed into the Zoom as well. The sounds I've got into the Zoom, uh, the sounds I've got in the Line 6. Um, a lot of this hasn't really changed, to be perfectly honest with you, for YouTube. Settings-wise, again, creature of habit, I don't really change settings. Once I find a setting that works for me, it stays there and doesn't move. I don't, I'm not... I don't like tinkering. Uh, I know what sound I want, and once I've got it, that's it. So a lot of these pedals, if you've been around this channel for long enough, well, it'll be kind of like, you know, old news to you, so to say, really. But if you're new to the channel and you're kind of curious to kind of how I've uh, these pedals set, hopefully this will be kind of like, you know, a thingy. But uh, what I thought I'd do is I thought I would just kind of... Um, basically walk through the pedal board to start with, tell you the settings, tell you what I use it for... And then what I'll do is we'll do some uh, we'll we'll do some playing after that, and I'll show you the individual effects and how I how how I might use them or will use them depending on what I've got. So um, so from the amp, the first thing we hear is the Boss RC10 Looper, and now this pedal I don't have on my pedal board, and I'm not sure if I prefer that or I don't. Um, when I first kind of got into the whole looping thing, and I was using my Ditto Looper X2, uh, which is just sat over there on Queenie's board now. She's got it. Um, I always had that pedal off my pedal board. It was always on the floor to the left-hand side. And as a result of that, I've kind of got used to loopers not being on a board. It, it sounds weird, I know, but, but, but it, it feels that way. So the RC10 has been on my board before. But I've like in the last couple of months or so, I've, I, well, longer than that, I've took it off and I've had it on the floor. So it's not actually part of my main pedal board. Uh, and also the thing is, I don't need this thing live. I don't need the looper live. I've got my band, you know, I've got Queenie and I've got Jonjo. So, you know, a looper is kind of like not needed. And if I do need a looper, I've got my Line 6 Delay modeler, which gives me enough time. I don't need massive loops. I'm not, unless I'm doing anything solo, in which case I would use that, but like I say, I don't need it. So, the first thing it hits is the RC10 looper, which is my favourite looper of all time. There are some things I would like to change about it. Uh, I, would love, I would love like a designated stop button. That'd be nice, but um, I'm not going to complain about that because I think this thing is fantastic. The drums sound amazing. Uh, the all the I mean there are so many drum tracks in it. I even scratched the surface on the drum tracks of the amount I use for my songs. Um, you know it's crazy this thing, it really is amazing. And again, you can save loops as well. And um, I'm hopefully going to release these loops if I haven't already as a little kind of backing track album. I've got I've got ten on here. I want to record and loop. And then put out there for you people on uh, the tube on my Bandcamp, so you can kind of download them and and play away. Um, so anyway, but that's the first pedal I have, and again, I have it off the board. And again, I think it's just because I I'm so used to the Ditto Looper not being on the board, um, so it, it's it's off. It, it, it lives there. Um, will it ever make it onto a board? Because I want to make a bigger pedal board. Uh, possibly, I don't know. I really don't know for the tube. I'm I'm in two minds on that one. I can't decide and. That normally bugs me, and it does bug me, to be honest with you, because I, I like to know. I don't like it when I'm unsure on things. I like to just know. Anyway, so that's the first pedal in the chain. 
So from the amp into the Boss RC10 looper. Everything goes into the front end as well, Poochie. I never use effects loop. The only time I ever used an effects loop was when I used a Ditto looper. Just because it looped cleaner through the effects loop than it did through the front end. It didn't really like the front end, so to say. So that's the first pedal. Uh, from there, we hit the brain, as I call it, which is my Zoom G2.1U. And I've been using these G2s, 0.1Us, since 2005. Yeah, 2005. I've been using... 2005? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I got my first one Christmas 2004? I'm guessing... Yes, Christmas 2004 is the first time I got one of these, and I've been using one ever since. You know, I, I de I've never had a pedal board, really, without this on. But I use for bands and for videos and stuff like this and the other. I always have a Zoom G2. And this has got multiple different things set up in it. Uh, I have a compressor in this uh, the, uh, set up, but it's not compressing. I actually have compression on zero. Uh, I have it just driving the front end of the amp, so I have the volume up. Uh, that's all I've got in there. Um, I also have reverbs, whammies, and choruses on this one as well. So A7 on on my, my on my Zoom is kind of like my home base. That's my kind of like clean tone. Uh, the only thing I've got going on that one, apart from the compressor, is on the on the expression pedal here. I have reverb. So when it's all the way back. There's no reverb, and I can get incrementally more and more, depending on where the pedal is, until it's all forward and we get to Jeff Buckley territory. So A7, that's what that is. That's my that's my clean pedal. That's where I am 90% of the time. Um, if I go up to A8, uh, I now have a, a whammy on the expression pedal. Everything's the same, apart from now the expression pedal is a whammy effect, and you'll hear that in a minute when we get to sounds uh a9 is another whammy as, as well a8 sorry is whammy up uh a9 is whammy down so it's really kind of deep uh a6 is my c1 chorus john for shanty thing and you'll hear that as well in a minute so that's my chorus i haven't really ever a6 has always been chorus for me uh, a7 is always clean anything else around that is affected um i also do use this uh, I use the harmonizer inside this for uh, a song the trio do called Overcome. Uh, and that's basically set to F sharp, ma uh, sorry, F major. And it's in a uh, minor third. So it's a minor third harmony in F major because the song's in D minor, it's its relative major. And uh, I'll show you that as well. So that's what the zoom does. And it basically controls everything. That, you know, but th th it's basically everything's kind of running through this before it gets to the looper. And it just basically, I just like what the Zoom G2 does. It just, it just seems to control everything a little bit more and makes everything a little bit more consistent. And I like it. And I love the reverb in this thing. And I love having reverb on an expression pedal. It's heaven. So that's what I've got there. And I say, I'll show you all these um, with the sound examples anyway, so you can hear it and you'll be able to hear what I do with the expression pedal. Um, Oh, and as well, apart from that uh, Overcome patch I've got in here, that is the, the Harmony, nothing is song specific. I can't say that word very well. Nothing is song kind of like, you know, I don't have anything that I have to use. It's all free reign. I can use whatever I want. I don't ever go, apart, well, I say, apart from Overcome where I need that Harmony effect, other than that, when I'm improvising or making songs for guitar demos or, or writing or recording... It's all free reign. You know, I don't know what I'm going to use from one minute to another. I don't know what music wants me to use from one minute to another. So it's just all whatever, you know. Okay, so um, so from the Zoom G2, what's the next thing we hit? We hit the glorious Line 6 delay model, the DL4. And I've had two of these now. This is my second one. The first one, unfortunately, died a while back. And uh, this is the second one I've got. And again, if this died, I'd be getting another one as well because they're fantastic. I probably will get the new one because I, li I like the look of the new one. It's a bit smaller as well. So on the DL4, I have three different settings. So A is a super supremely long, epic delay. I mainly use that for kind of like volume swells and for kind of like dramatic kind of things. It's really, really nice. It works really well with the Mel 9, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot 
I really love this delay. It's really long delay. Like you know, the, the repeats are, are louder than the original signal as well. So when I do volume swells, it really kind of like expands. It kind of like does that warm, that gorgeous violin thing. Uh, B on the Line Six Delay Modeler is kind of what I call my solo delay. Uh, it's basically modeled kind of on Dave Murray. It's basically my Dave Murray sound. Um, so if I'm soloing or doing anything in clean and I want just a kind of a, not particularly subtle delay, it's not subtle, but um, like a delay that's not going to get too much in the way like A will, that's what I go to. And C is reverse. So basically Jimi Hendrix, uh, which is all good. And that's that. Uh, I have no longer any idea how I set these three. Uh, it's been that long since I actually set these delays and the reverse in this pedal. I have no idea how I set this thing. I have no idea where the dials were whatsoever. So uh, I do apologize, people, too, but I can't tell you the settings on that one. So moving on from a DL4, we get to the glorious, fantastic, majestic, beautiful, heavenly, most amazing pedal. One of the most amazing pedals ever. The Electro Harmonics Mel 9. Now, I use this thing all the time. You heard it in the intro jam. You hear it in the, the demos I do all the time. You know, it, it's everywhere. It really was. When I got this pedal, it was a real game changer, I want to say. Because it gave me the ability to do things I've only ever kind of dreamt about doing with the guitar. You know, I used to kind of get by by basically going to the Zoom pedal and putting chorus on the Zoom and a long delay. And that was my kind of like orchestral kind of sound. But then this thing came along and the world changed. And it's just incredible. And very expensive, but worth every penny. And again, this is not one of those pedals that if it broke, I'd be buying another one. Uh, and I use this for all sorts. I've got I, I use it for cello, the string sound, the choir sound, the saxophone, the clarinet. Um, I'll show you a couple of different settings when we get to that pedal, people with you, of what I use it for. And it's, it's just heavenly. And live, it sounds epic as well. If you put it on to like the orchestra sound, uh, sorry, is it the orchestra? No, the string sound or the high choir sound and blend it with your original guitar signal playing live, it sounds epic. It sounds immense, and I love it to bits. That pedal is amazing. Most of the time, I have all the dials, so the dry dial volume thing, the effect dial, attack dial, and the sustain dial, I have them turned all the way up on 10, so everything's cranked. Uh, invariably, sometimes I'll get rid of my guitar, which is this left dial here. I'll turn that off and just have the pedal making its noise, but... Um, it depends. Again, nothing specific. Nothing set in stone. Everything alters apart from se um, certain settings on certain pedals. Speaking of which, brings me neatly to the Marshall Governor 2 Plus. Now, I've been using these pedals since about 2007, give or take. Oh, yeah, 2007. And the setting I got in 2007 is still the setting I have now. It's no different. So I have the gain all the way up. I have no bass. I have the deep dial all the way up. No treble. Uh, and I have the mid-range dial at 10 o'clock. And I have the volume at 3 o'clock. That's the setting I have. That's the settings I use all the time. It never changes. Uh, it's very rare for me to dial back the gain. It's very rare for me to turn up the mids, turn up the bass, turn up the volume. Uh, there are occasions where I'll turn the volume down. Uh if I'm doing a certain loop and I want the guitar to sit further back, but not so often anymore with the, with the Boss RC10. I don't really have to do that anymore. When I use the Ditto Looper, I had to kind of like move the volume quite a bit, um, but now I don't really use it. And that's basically where it is for live when I'm playing around doing guitar demos. That's where the volume stays. It doesn't really move from three o'clock. Okay, moving on to the Golden Plexi by Tone City. This is my, well... This is just, uh, I don't know what to say. It's just fantastic. This is my always on pedal pretty much all the time. Again, the only song I can think of that's kind of got spe specific effects is the trio song Overcome in where I turn this off and I just have amp clean. 
uh, because my amps are already set clean. I don't use the amps for anything other than power. I get all my tone from pedals, and I've spoke about that before, and I'm not going to talk about that again right now. So, the Golden Plexi, as soon as I saw Anderton's demo this way back whenever it was, and I saw Mr. Rob play through this thing, I was like, I need one immediately, and I just love these things. So, and it it's pretty much always on. For the most part, this pedal is always on, kind of. It kind of flicks off and on depending on how I feel. Again, nothing's... Yeah, some days I'll have it on more than others, and some days I won't have it on at all. It just depends how I feel. It's really weird. Uh, but again, I think that's the way it should be. I don't like having... I don't like being tied to certain things for certain kind of things. I like to be able to be free to use whatever I want to use if I want to use it, so to say. Unless, like I say, the song requires me to use a certain thing, which, uh, like I say, Overcome does. That's the only song I can think of. Um, so, I have this set. With the volume at 12 o'clock, the tone is all the way off. So tone's all the way down on zero. And I have the gain set at about 7 o'clock. So it's basically just edge of breakup with the pedal. It's not distorted, but it isn't clean. Uh, it's kind of like an overdrive. And that, like I say, that is always on. You can hear it turn off and on. So, um, so that is pretty much always on. So coming... Moving along to the next thing. So coming to the Wah Wah pedal. So Wah Wah's changed quite a lot for me. It's the only pedal I really kind of mess around with when I'm like changing boards. And I, I go to and fro between an Ibanez Wah or a Vox Silvertop. So this is the Vox that I've had forever. And this is actually my favourite Wah pedal of all time. The Vox is. It's just... I, I, I just don't... If I could only have one wire pedal for the rest of my life, this would be the one. It's just fantastic. But um, I do get cravings for the preamp inside a WH-10 every now and again. And that's where we are right now. So I, at this point in time, I'm using the vintage WH-10 Revival, which was very, very kindly sent to me for review and very, very kindly gifted to me by him as well. And I love this wire pedal. It's ridiculous expressive. It's got the guitar and bass function, which I'll show you in a minute, which again adds more expression. The preamp in it is amazing. It's really clean. It's great. It feels great. Sounds great. Is great. Love it to bits. So we're here right now, people, but in a month's time or a week's time or a day's time, I might go back to the Vox. I might go to an Ibanez. I might go to my V2. You know, I, I like to flip flop wah wah pedals. And again, it just depends on how I feel. If I feel like I want to use the Vox, I'll use the Vox. If I want to stay here, I'll stay here. But that's kind of like the only real open space, so to say, really. Um, that's the only pedal that I will change in and change out. Uh, so from the uh, Vintage WH10 Revival Wah, we go to the glorious, fantastic Boss DS2, which I just can't be without. Uh, I tried to go without this pedal, and I can't. I just can't live without the DS2. I really can't live without it. It's just one of those pedals that I just am head over heels in love with and always have been and always will be. I'm pretty positive about that. The way it just sings, you heard it in the intro jam, you hear it all over what I do, the DS2. I just, I just can't get enough of what this pedal does. I just love it to bits. I always have it set on the turbo mode, so mode 2, and I always have it set maxed out. I have volume, uh, sorry, level, tone, and distortion always on max. Uh, and, I, you know, so level is maxed out, the tone is all the way up on high, and distortion is all the way up on max as well. And again, mode 2, just boss DS2. Okay, moving on from there to the last pedal. The last pedal I have in the chain is the Electro Harmonics Double Muff. Now, this is kind of my fuzz pedal, but it's not really a fuzz. Um, I f and I kind of flip-flop between this and the Sundial by Hubcap John. But this kind of always kind of wins out because I like what it does with the Governor. And I did a video on that not so long ago of how I use fuzz. Uh, but I find this double muff, it's more like a fuzz overdrive. It's a lot warmer, but it's got more clarity. 
than like a fuzz. It's not as kind of washed out. It's got a bit more of a kind of an overdriven thing. And again, I'll show you that in a minute. And I only ever use this really with the governor. I don't ever use that with like the DS2 or just the Golden Plexi. I only ever use these two pedals together. Uh, they're just... Them two are... They're like a magic combination. Uh, I will though stick o stick on top of these two, the DS2, every now and again. So I'll have these three pedals on. Um, and I like to use these two pedals for when like the trio does like um, Jimi Hendrix stuff. Because it just reminds me of that kind of thing. It doesn't really have the right tonality, but it kind of feels right. Yeah, if that makes any sense. And I like to control... And again, what that does is gives me the ability to, be able to control everything from the volume of the guitar. So... If I roll the volume all the way down, I can get like really clean tones and then I can roll up and get a bit more dirty, dirty, dirty and then fuzzed out right at the top end. And if I want more gain, I can always show on the DS2. So there are two other pedals that I would really love to add to this board. And one is the Dunlop Roto Vibe that I've got and I've used off and on for a long time. I would love that on this board, but again, I don't have the space. But again, that might change soon. And the other pedal I'd really love to add to this board is the MXR Phase 90 that I have as well. I've really grown to love Phase recently. And I've been using it quite a lot. And I've been using the Phaser on the Zoom G2. If you've been, use, if you've been hearing a Phase, I've been using the G2 uh, uh, Phaser. So I would love those two on there. Hence why I really want to get a, a, like a different kind of board. And one of those Fender power supply so i can actually expand a bit and actually have those two pedals uh at the same time my my fear on having too many pedals is kind of there because i'm always afraid that kind of like if one goes down i don't really want to be kind of left in the lurch especially live but i don't think that to be too much of an issue i don't know but um but that's that's an idea for the future people with you that's kind of like an idea for not right now and also, um, I don't have another pedal board. This is, uh, this is kind of... I, I used to have two pedal boards. I had one I was using for YouTube, and I did a video on that. Then I had uh, a pedal board I was using for live, and they were two separate boards. And I got sick and fed up of that very, very kind of like after a while of, of kind of messing around. And so I consolidated it all into one board, which is this. Um... So, like, the electro harmonics came on, the, the Mel 9 came on to here and stuff like that. And I got a bit sick and fed up with that. So, this is my only pedal board, apart from my Zoom G6, which is basically my backup uh, pedal board. You know, so, and that just lives in its uh, flight case over here. It's in it's inside a Boss pedal board. And that's what I use if, if this died at a gig, I would go to the Zoom G6. Um, if the Zoom, if this pedal board wouldn't fit at a gig, the Zoom G6 will, I would use that. But that that's it, Poochie. I don't I've kind of consolidated everything down to one pedal board and that's this one. Like I say, there are two other pedals I would love on this board. Like I say, but um at this point in time it's not really doable. And again, I can't really afford the Fender Power Supply at this point in time. I am hopefully investing in a bit of bigger pedal board. We'll see how that goes though. I don't know if that'll work. We'll we'll see what happens. Uh but this is where we are right now, and this is where I, this in all fairness, if somebody said you're not allowed anything else for the rest of your life. This is all you're allowed. I wouldn't be complaining. I'd be very happy. Anyway, that's enough talking. Let me show you some sound examples now. So that's all my settings. That's all the way it's laid out. Like I say, Amp, Boss RC10, Zoom G2, Line 6 Delay, Mel 9, Governor, Golden Plexi, Wah, could be Ibanez Wah, uh, Revival, WH10, or Vox Wah. Uh, it'll never be a crybaby. I don't like crybabies at all. DS2, double muff to the guitar. Okay, so it's time to, time to make some noise. I've spoken off. So um, we'll start with... I'm not going to show you the looper because you know what that does. Uh, but what I will do is we'll, we'll go through it. So we'll start with a zoom pedal. So I'll show you the clean um, and the golden plex. I'll show you the clean and then I'll show you the, like, the golden plex thing. And I'll show you like the, the reverb and the whammy. And things like that. And then I'll just turn everything on. And, and, and just kind of go through individually. Uh, I will start with the Golden Plexi off. And then I'll turn it on. You'll see this anyway. I'll get the camera in position where you, you where you can see what I'm doing. And uh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, I'm using the Oswald John Strat today as well.
good of YouTube. There you go. That's uh, basically well, kind of like a, a little idea to kind of like what I do. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm turning on, turning off there. Um, like I say, there are a couple of different settings on the Mel 9 that I'll use. Uh, I like I switched to the high choir. Uh, at one point there was this kind of like nice sustaining kind of thing. And what that is, is uh, the clarinet mode. And for the clarinet mode, I basically just have everything maxed out on 10. And it gives this really cool thing. Let me just kind of show you actually. Um, this might peek out the camera, but I think we'll be okay. So the clarinet mode, when everything's kind of cranked, so you have your original signal. When you stick on the clarinet over the top, it just kind of just sustains it. It sounds really nice with plexi. extra and there's a really cool effect here I think it's this one yeah so um, the brass section uh, the brass mode on the Mel 9 is really cool it does these amazing kind of swells so you can do this let me turn that flexi off I mean, what's not to love? I say it's amazing. Let's say the golden plexi will go off and on depending on how I feel. If I want it really clean, it's off. This is just the amp. Again, I never really use the amps for anything other than just power. They're just there to kind of like project all this slot. I've knocked that dial. Um, but with it on, I just, I just love the way it... It just sounds great. I say, com you know, different combinations of pedals. Governor and the Golden Plexi sound amazing. The Golden Plexi and the DS2 sound amazing. Governor and the DS2 sound amazing. Them two, you know. Hopefully you saw what I was doing through the tube and you can kind of like, you can see what, what goes on. It's not rocket science. I'm not, you know, I'm not Mr. Um, complex when it comes down to stuff. So again, no effects loop stuff, none of that. Um, it is what it is. You know, everything goes into the front end and it's loud and obnoxious and I, I love it to bits. But there's a lot of dynamics in there as well. There's a lot like different kind of gains, different kind of tones. You know, the, the way the governor sounds on its own to the way it sounds with the Golden Plexi is different to the way the Golden Plexi sound with the DS2. The, the DS2 and the Golden, the governor sound different. You know, it, there's all sorts of different tones in here and I, I love it to bits. It's, it's great, I absolutely adore it. Um, it's just amazing. I absolutely love this pedal board. And again, it's, there's a reason it hasn't changed much uh, since about 2007. You know, the, a lot of these pedals have been the same since 2007. Obviously, the Golden Plexi was initially a tube screamer. But I uh, I found out I don't really like tube screamers. I just don't like what they do. And I think it's because I use kind of martially mid rangey kind of amps. Uh, it doesn't really lend itself very well to that kind of sound although saying that you know, I'm, I'm using my super reverb which is and my deluxe which are back there as well for live and stuff now as well um as well as an orange as well so it's it kind of it doesn't i don't know i just don't really like tube screamers i just don't get on well with them um although queenie has a bass tube screamer and i might have to do a video on that and see if it's any any different um, anyway, um, but yeah, anyway, that's that's it. That's my current pedal board as it stands. This might it might change very soon. I don't know if it does. I'll do a video, people of YouTube. I'll if, if I change my pedal board soon ish, I'll do a video documenting what I'm changing and how I'm doing it and, and where things are going. If I'm adding anything or taking anything away, which I highly doubt. Um, and we'll see where we are in a couple of weeks' time. So I'm not sure at this point in time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vid, people tube. Uh, if you like the videos I do here, uh, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Really, really helps me out. Uh, gives me the ability to do this channel. So everyone who's on Patreon, you are legends. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate all your support. I can't even begin to describe in words how much that means to me, how important that is. It, it really is important. So thank you so much indeed. Uh, that's on the link to the description box below, as well as a link to my Bandcamp, where I have music uh, for sale and for download and whatnot. I also have links to my merch store thing down there. Anyway, other than that, Pooju, thank you very much indeed. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again very soon for another one. Have a great morning, afternoon, and good evening. Goodbye now. Have a good one.